don't talk for a minute or so. Mm -hmm. Okay, going live. Okay, welcome world, welcome New Minds Nation to the end of the day podcast. The It just keeps getting better and better, folks, because we're bringing on some super insightful, rich, creative people to have conversations, and I, I just can't get over how many um, insights and golden nuggets we're getting on all these different topics. Today is absolutely in line with that. You are in for a treat. Our guest today is Wida Hamdan. And Wida Hamdan is a professional artist, philanthropist, among many other things. And uh, we're going to talk today. The topic is on creativity as response to crisis. So a little, a little full disclosure first to start. Um, Wida is the founder and president of Education Unbound, which is the educational nonprofit in close partnership with New Mind. So we have a professional relationship. But I just want to say from the get-go that this conversation is absolutely all to do with the role and power of art and creativity as a way of responding to life and a way of creating meaning. So welcome, Wida. Thanks for joining us on the End of the Day podcast on New Minds TV. Thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor to be here. Yeah. So I just want to just kick this conversation right off. We were already chatting a little bit in the in the prelude before we went live, and I was like, hold that thought. This is getting too good. I want, I want to save it for the live show. So, okay, first of all, I think I want to start with the present, but then if you don't mind, I'd like to zoom back to your past because I think there's something really important and rich there that we can all learn from your experience as a young child first discovering art. But first, I just want to say and mention that, you know, flashback about a month ago, mid-March, when the, this, the, the corona wave first really hit the U.S. And, you know, that's when our offices shut down. We all came home. Everything was uncertain, you know, from, from a new mind's point of view, especially uncertain because all of our clients were shut down and things like that. And I noticed, you know, because we're connected on social media, I noticed that one of the first things that I saw you doing, you seemed to be at the instinctual level, was you were outside 
painting. It's almost, it felt like you were like responding to the chaos by going to your core, which is art. Can you talk about that impulse that you felt? Sure, yes. So like everybody, I was, I dealt with a shock in the beginning um, and I didn't know whether the wave was of a sadness, disappointment, and I needed to make sense out of it. And I had to, of course, resort inwards to find an answer. And of course, nature is a huge, um, it's a cradle for me. I always come to nature to give me an answer. Uh, and there is a spot for me in the lake that I, it's a very meditative spot uh, that I just stop and, and think. But then I sat there, it was a Sunday afternoon, I'm thinking, what's really happening? And what does it mean for us as people, as the world, as the environment, as humanity, for us to be back in our homes? And does it mean we have to go back and reflect within, prioritize life, uh, prioritize our, you know, was it, what does it mean to everybody? And so it really hit me. And even my media changed, right? I just was looking at, trees and I spent hours just looking outside at nature at the lines of nature and and I thought I was just having a communication with it but and and I it was just a science communication but um and it was very heightened but I went inwards for answers and I felt a revelation in the beginning it was I remember a few days before I was I couldn't sleep um I was lost I felt um, what's going to happen to our plans, our businesses sh shut down, just like yours. Um, our, our, all the nonprofit effort has been stopped. The refugees, plans for the refugees that, that have been ongoing. And we have so many wonderful donors that have been doing, have given us so much money. Everything has stopped. But um, we can keep thinking about crisis, crisis, crisis. But the, there's a there's a, a control factor or not non control factor. There's some things that you can't control, and there's some things that you can really control. And I'm thinking, what can I really control here? And I and I the fact that I could, so how can I the, controlling my feelings, controlling my emotions, controlling my creativity, um, and and that's when I was I was just painting. I it, the answer was just paint, and. It, even my media change, I went from oil to something super, super soft. Ooh, uh, interesting. And I just want to just want to mention, Wida, that for for those who aren't familiar with you, you are already an established artist. And if they go to WidaHamdan.com, which they can see on the screen right now, they'll see you're mm -hmm. actually you have kind of developed a unique signature style that I know you've evolved away from recently, which is the reflections. Right? right and that i bring that up because you mentioned the the body of water near your house that you were drawn to which i think yeah. was the original source of your reflections impressionistic style am i right absolutely and you know that space has a lot of secrets for me because if it feels like it's a reflection of life uh, you know i've always come to it with questions and it's a reflection not just of trees but it's a reflection of profound answers and questions for me. And it's a profound, it's like reflections of refugees, reflections of immigrants, reflections of what's happening with the environment reflection. It's, it's, it's just a reflective spot, right? Yeah. It's more, more than just a fusion of trees and, and light and water and color. It's more than just that. It, yeah. It's just all, Underneath it, and and I felt that here it was again, waiting for me to say, "I have the answers. You just have to come and listen." And uh, yeah, absolutely. And, and the yeah, and the wonderful part is that uh, even the media changed because I went from doing oil and textured, but I wanted something soft, and and the softness came because of I think the harshness of what's happening around us around us with the COVID nineteen and the news and I just wanted something silent and whispery and just that's peaceful so that I can um, I can feel that it's um, softening the edges, softening the, the harshness, softening um, everything that's happening around. Yeah, I love that. That really reflects a lot of the other conversations we've been having about, you know, responding to the situation with an extra layer of compassion, 
an extra amount of grace for each other, whether you're a parent, it's for your child. If you're a teacher, mm -hmm. it's for your students. And that's almost like reflected in your response to the medium of going a little bit softer, like you said. It's almost like creating yeah. that compassionate space for this expression. So this instinct, yeah. this instinct that you had, you know, to go straight to art in this moment of, of crisis, I would like to now go back in time a little bit to when, cause, because I know the story and I know it's powerful. As a, as a refugee yourself, as a child, you found a special sanctuary in creativity and an expression. Do you mind sharing a little bit of that story? Yeah. Well, I'm going to take you, I'm going to reverse you a little bit. So I'm going to start here and then go back okay. when I was, because so when COVID hit us again, and I, and I sat here thinking, why am I feeling what I'm feeling? So we have water. <laughs> when I was a refugee, I didn't have any. An immigrant didn't have any. Uh, we have electricity. I didn't have any. Uh, there's food. We didn't have any. Um, I can go out and get provisions. We couldn't do that. Uh, well, we have space to come out and walk around the nature. We couldn't do that um, without being sniped at or bombed at. Or you see, so I, we have internet. We can connect with the whole world. I couldn't do that with anybody. We didn't know if somebody was living or, or, or has been shot or killed or missing. Or there's news everywhere and over. <laughs> over more than we need before it was TV or or radio. So that was a whole shift for me, right? Because I kept thinking. So the first week was it took me back to that when I was twelve, living in bunkers in shelter uh, underground with my family of um, my extended family, many thirty of us, and we lived in shelters um, head to toe for months in 1982 in Lebanon, uh, when there was shelling and cannons, and we couldn't get out of the bunkers for a long time because of the uh, unsafety of the situation or, and where we were. Uh, I remember going to school and my parents had to drive us because we were in a, we live in a place where it, it's a pretty scenic, so uh, my parents would be sniped at if they if the bus were, if the bus were to come and pick us up, we were, they would be sniped, but the bus had to go shelter behind a mountain my parents would have to drive us to the bus, which was very risky for them, drop us off at the bus station, and we would go to school. And that only lasted very little because then it was super dangerous, right? And just trying to find a way to go to school. The end, schools shut down. We couldn't go to school, but we had to move from, from our house under the staircase to the bunkers. And by the way, it was a cow shed, my grandpa's cow shed, mm. but it didn't smell how oh, shit it was because it was fixed but it was just your old light switch that you would just turn on and off one light and we were so many but we were all together we shared one meal everybody cooked something in that space it was super dark uh we had candles and if we have electricity it was that bowl but we had cards and we had pencil and paper and that's how i started drawing and i drew blindly uh, at night I didn't even know what I was doing. I was, I took my sketch pad and I, I just started drawing at night and I thought, okay, I'll get out. Um, just, I want you to imagine this. So I would crawl out with a staircase um, where there was a little bit of a dim of a light to see what I drew the night before, yeah. just to see this, this uh, excitement of, oh, I did something that was, uh, that was quite, you know, quite, I was celebrating what I did the night before and that kept me going. And that was my, that was my survival. That was the way I survived that period of time. And I got really attacked. That was my way, that, that was my escape from the chaos around us through art, through, yeah. through expression. And it was the, what I love about that is it was the process itself. It, you were not doing art for the sake of a product because you, no. were, you were an art class and you had to produce some kind of final project. In fact, it was so much about the process that you couldn't even see the product in progress the way you're describing it. You could just get little snippets of it. It was about something happening like from heart, mm -hmm. soul, mind onto the paper. Like it had to it had to leave your system. And that pure, really pure act of creativity kind of became your, your comfort and your sanctuary. Yeah, absolutely. 
Absolutely. And this is, this is an important point that you mentioned. It's not about form, but it's about content, mm. right? So it's about a product, but it's about the mood, the feeling. And that is what creativity is all about, right? It's, it's that, that, um, that mood, that transition, or that whatever you're feeling in that moment while you're creating, and 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 that's the elevation, and that's why you make art, and that's why you sing, or you make music, or you dance, or you um, or you pretend to play, or that. Th- this is the feeling that takes you from one place to another. That the creative language. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, now, whether I sell the painting or not, okay, I need to sell the painting. But the, the authenticity of the work, the content, is what I'm after. Yeah. Right? And it's, yeah, absolutely. It's not, it's not the form, it's the content. And it's interesting. I want. I just want to make a quick connection to what we do at New Minds now with, uh, with things like the Cardboard Challenge that's happening today as we speak. It wraps up within the next couple of hours. And that's one of the key reasons why I wanted to chat with you today is the creativity theme. So a lot of times we find when we're working with kids and parents that parents are still kind of focused on the product and how it looks, how polished it is, how neat and clean it is. And we at New Minds know that really it's not. It's about it's about the expressiveness, the thought process that goes into the creation. And that's why something like the Cardboard Challenge is so powerful because it's a pure act of imagination. Like... What's important is not the, the, the cardboard creation that the child holds up to you is not the important part. It's what they see mapped onto that, the creation, the creative Absolutely. process that they have mapped onto with these very simple materials, you know. Absolutely. So that's what Absolutely. that's what really echoes for me in what you're saying about your your childhood experience with art. Yeah, because there's, a, there's the self realization in that, right? There's a self discovery that we don't see it. Right, and and that's the beauty of the mind, and you know. So just because we don't see it doesn't mean that's not happening. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's what we value so much is that is a, is the uh, and it's happening in nature. We don't see the tree growing. Does it mean that it's not growing? Yeah, yeah. Those, those you know, processes, those <laughs> subtle processes, those under the surface processes. But what's yeah. uh, but what you mentioned a while ago, like when it's authentic that's when the art somehow becomes so powerful. I want to, we have a comment from Shay on the live stream and she's talking about yeah. some of the recent work that you've posted. She says, when I first saw the new piece you posted, I almost started to cry. It's so beautiful mm-hmm. and full of emotion. So that invisible self process that you're talking about came through yeah. the, came through the product in this case and was able to affect a viewer, you know, absolutely. So that's incredible. She's gonna- yeah, there's a connection, right? So, and this is where it's so interesting because with a child, and the same, this is the art appreciation, the, the Shea is connecting with it on a level, and that's another subject altogether, the art appreciation. So, how, why did she connect with it, right? Why did she like it? And, and so, with the cardboard challenge with parents and, and students, it's, it's not about whether it's done well or it's done right. There's no right and wrong in art. It's uh, it's it's why it was done, and and then remembering that it, it's done for a reason that we don't necessarily see, and honoring that, and asking questions. The questions that we ask a child are super super important because we can either turn off that passion or that creativity, mm. yeah. or turn it off. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and one, yeah. one thing that we that we talk a lot about at New Minds, and we it's in our teacher trainings, and we try to counteract it with our actual programs, is there's actually some studies about how creativity declines over the course of a child's school career. Like in, yeah. entering kindergartners can be tested on you know, you know, well designed creativity measures and score really high, and then that same test group can be tested in a longitudinal study. And by the time they graduate from high school, the percentage of them demonstrating creative thinking is just, I don't even want to say the number. It's so depressing. So we feel that there's a real imbalance in general between, you know, what sometimes is referred to as convergent versus divergent thinking. So convergent thinking, of course, is that logical drive to find the correct answer. And we know that a lot of the sciences are 
are based on that. Even the core STEM fields, which is why we kind mm -hmm. of embrace STEAM at New Minds, because we want to mm -hmm. balance with divergent thinking. What's your observation? I mean, as a parent, and as you know, as the founder of an educational nonprofit, even, and as an artist, those three combined. What is your take on the balance between? you know, logical and creative thinking right now in the school system or in general? Yeah, you see, and, and this is very interesting what you just said, because from, from age two to five, for example, um, we can't really have the child, uh, we could just, we should just let the child do whatever they want to be doing. We can't tell the child to draw inside the line, like, oh, the way we start telling the child, this is, this is, this is where you have to paint inside the line, where you inhibit it's like you're telling a child you can only look at the runner but you can't run and they're crawling and they're trying to start to walk but you can just watch them run but you can't run mm. you see what i'm saying you can't have that it's an inhibition because art should be integrated into everything into the math into the geography into the history into the language arts and the same thing with the acting and the same thing with uh, with a pretend play the same the same thing with singing and music so if, if it's integrated into into math, into history, geography, into your uh, all your subjects, it becomes a holistic approach, and it be, it's not drill and kill. It becomes something a child is um, is remembering forever and is enjoying. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and it doesn't become something that, that you, I can't draw. Or I can't sing. Oh, I can't play music. Yeah. Your voice is a your voice is a song. Your voice you have your voice. That's a voice. That's an instrument. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Is a, you're a dancer naturally. Yeah. So your clarity. You are natural. You're a natural artist. Yeah. So so we have naturally inhibited the child who is born creative because we put them in chambers yeah and i think we kind of end up typecasting ourselves in a way as well you know we we hear those voices and those messages from the culture around us and then we begin we begin that self typecasting like i'm not i can't draw i'm not a dancer i can't sing the same thing happens with the other subjects too you know like i'm not a math person but i think with the arts especially um there's a lot of self-critical thinking that ha happens. Maybe perfectionism comes into play as well that just shuts it down. That just shuts it down. But you know down. what? Because we're not taught in school what is uh, the critical thinking in the arts is not taught. So that's the, la it's, it's actually taken out. Uh, meaning when you look at a piece of art, and I want to just step back one more. So we talked about the two to five, right? When a child is already told to, to paint within the line or the art is not carried over into subjects in the school. And then you have the six to the nine. I'm, I'm talking Montessori because I, I just love that method, right? Mm -hmm. The line, Montessori does so well and carries the art in everything. Uh, but in our school system, six to nine, now now you have, you have uh, the dexterity is taking form, right? And perhaps the technical skill will start taking form. Mm. But it's very important that we don't show them master painters, for example. Mm. But, and what's really important is that we show them the struggle of the artist and not just the final product. Yeah. Because I show you my studio work, I have hundreds of works that are just, that were, that helped me get here. So you don't see the 10,000 hours that I've put in, yeah. but you just see the final, and that is an, and that's a mistake because there's work. So if we show the child that for us to become good at something, it's the effort, it's the work, it's the 10,000 hours, it's, it's the passion, it's the you fall, you get up and you walk, just like you did when you were crawling, you fell, you get up and now you're running. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? It's yeah. in anything, everything, and in the arts as well. It's not any different and they do it so naturally. Yeah. But what, what happened along the line, right? What happened? And I think it's, yeah. it's it's exasperated a bit these days, which we can call the Instagram era, where people see that final, beautifully composed photo of the final product. Not even just art now. This could be the athlete, the entertainer, 
you know, the, the fitness guru, we see that final product. We don't see those 10,000 hours. We don't see the mess. We don't see the fails. And I, and I get, in a sense, I guess art's always been like that too, because even if you think about the context of like a gallery, people saw art in its final galleryized form and didn't see, you know, the hundreds of missteps or abandoned projects. Me. And you don't know the story of, for example, Van Gogh painted, sold one painting and he became an artist at 30, that at 37. Yeah. And yeah. we don't, you know, one painting for, you know, for nothing, right? Yeah. So and that's what's so important for them to know that, that it just didn't happen. Yeah, the process. So I, I want to jump to something. I want to jump to something that came up in our pre, pre-live conversation that is really fascinating. So... Um, to put you on the spot a little bit, not to embarrass you, but you, we had a we had a call scheduled for this afternoon that that you missed. But it's okay, you're hundred percent forgiven. And when we were chatting, you were that you were saying, Ben, I was in I'm in flow state. You said I'm actually vibrating, like I just need to create and paint. I lo- we love the concept of flow state. We've actually read the original book. There's a psychologist named Mikhail Csikszentmihalyi. And he was at the University of Chicago and he studied these flow states among artists and athletes and entertainers where it's almost like time just seems to, di- that's one of the indicators actually, is time just seems to disappear. And you even talked about vibrating. Tell us about your flow states as an artist. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I think it happens when you're creating, right? I mean, and I'm sure you know the science. It takes you it takes you 20 minutes to get into flow, right? Without anybody interrupting, and it goes even we'll take we'll take it back as a child. But as an artist, uh, when I'm in my studio, there, there's something has to get me going. Whether I'm out in nature, if the weather is great, I'm out in nature. I'm naturally in flow. Uh, so um, you're focused, you're working, you're uninterrupted. That's what's super important because the interruption is just uh, first. It makes me really mad <laughs> because it become my work becomes choppy. I get agitated. It shows in my work that I'm agitated because I'm just like chop, 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 right? Versus when I'm flowing, uh, I'm feeling the colors. I'm feeling the textures. I'm feeling the transparency of the work. Uh, I'm responding. Uh, I am. I have the, if I'm in the studio, I have the music blasting. So I'm something is is keeping me going with it. And that's the flow. And honestly, some, I forget time. And I'm in my basement and there's, sta- there's a staircase. My family comes down. I don't even hear them. And mm. they come st- stand behind me and I scream. I, I'm like, what? what are you doing? For two minutes, I'm like, you can't just do that. I'm going to have a heart attack. <laughs> so, so yes, you just forget. Time is lost, right? Time, yeah. You, it's almost you go to another. You go to another state. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I, I, I feel I would love to to learn more about that. But you go to another state because um, you're just so deeply involved in your work that you forget everything around you. You forget you, you forget all the physical world, um, and you're living that moment when you're creating. Yeah. So that level of deep absorption is not necessarily the goal of art, but it's a byproduct of in, of those who are so immersed and focused on their craft that they can kind of get to that level. I think it ties into the concept of deep work versus multitasking, like you were saying. Like it takes at least 20 minutes to even get to like the deep work state and then, you know, flow from there. So, but however, to bring it to bring it back to like the situation now and we have families juggling a lot a lot they're trying to homeschool they're trying to do work from home and this has been a theme on the show of course obviously because we're being responsive to the times what how what advice do you have because you you have family at home as well and you're doing the same balancing act how can we take some of the stress and the chaos of like trying to keep our kids educated and not fall behind and stay on schedule how can we balance that out with creativity because the, the subtitle on the screen right now that people see, it says art as a refuge and a tool for healing and meaning. So if sure, we, sure. So how can how can it be that tool right now? What's your insight? So, you know, Ben, uh, one thing that that strikes me, um, I think of this period as a period of archive. I'm archiving because mm. I go back in time 
time when I was as a in in bunkers, it's a period in my life that's been archived. But I look back and I and it means so much to me. And I want parents to think the same way about this, right? It's a time with their children when it has so much value that their children can reflect on and they can reflect on and they can it becomes a point of conversation later in life that do you remember that time together we did that when we were under covid right so it's an archive a point in, point on the line in life right I, this is if we can just about that first as a, as a that's how i like to think about point in a line yeah and things become softer and you don't have to think about the stress of just get the homework done. But this is not really about that. It's a relationship to me. It's about the relationship with you and your kid first, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And the homework will get and and a lot of things are not as important. It's just that the relationship. And now and then, your child is going through stress as well. They may not know how to express it. Just like we don't know how to find the answers to a lot of things, but allowing the child the space to creatively express what they are going through through the languages of art which are, like i said they could be pretend play dancing um music singing just whatever they want to do uh, art painting writing if they enjoy writing because uh, that comes later right it depends what stage of their life they're in allow them that space uh, um if it's art create a place for them to explore meaning let the floor get the, if the floor is going to get dirty, create, set it up for it to get dirty and don't worry about about it because it's the last thing you want to worry about. He drops paint. Like, yeah. That breaks. Yeah. You know, floor when I drop paint and you're going to stop me? Yeah. I, I die. You know what I'm saying? No, you can't. <laughs> yeah, I, you know I've been in your studio. I know you still like to drop paint everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. So make an area where it's okay for the kids to drop paint. Where if it's in your kitchen, or it's on an island, or if you can't be outside on a balcony, or if you have a garden, it should be out. It could be out. Then make it outside, right? Uh, so this way they have that time, and then uh, set up set up the space where they could explore spray spatter and different kind of texture and media. It doesn't have to be. Uh, they're not trying to draw. They're expressing right now. Forget about the skill. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So now it's about letting the feelings out. Uh, let them enjoy. Let, let all of this come out. And if they decide to pick up something later and say, "I love what I did to Jackson Pollock," they can oops paint from Home Depot, and we can do further. That, that's something else you can follow through, but allow them to express without interruption yeah. um, and in the space. There's, there's, and that's. Yeah. There's one thing I worry about, Wida, and you know how you know how when every few years there's a major school finance crisis and funding is either cut or it's going to be cut. And what's the first thing that's always on the chopping block is the arts programs, right? It's almost a cliche. It's the music. It's the arts. Um, and so, and what I worry, one thing I worry about is this is kind of a microcosm of that, where suddenly. We're at home. We're in survival mode. I'm worried that in a lot of homes, parents are telling themselves, "I don't know anything about art. I don't know anything about teaching the skills of art or music or drama." So I guess we're just going to completely drop and cut that. And that's why your point is so important. It's not about the skills right now. It's about that invisible expression piece, the need for self-expression that's healthy yeah. and it's human. And all the parent has to do now is create the space for it. They don't have to. Absolutely. Yes. And they're so innate. They're so connected. Children are naturally connected with themselves, right? Uh, more than the parents because parents became adults and they may, somehow may have lost it, right? Yeah. I mean, Picasso, 80, said, I, I want to go back and become a child to paint like a child because, because of that natural spontaneity, the freedom. They have that. So don't worry. Just give them the space and honor it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you will do it. They're good at it. And I think I I agree 100%. And that's where I think the meaning making comes in as well. They may not understand it now, but I think it's important for us collectively and individually right now to to make meaning of this situation. We need to process it in sometimes invisible ways. And art is the way 
to do that. I know personally, I can relate definitely to your story even. So I, I do some writing and some, I've been writing poetry for many years, but in the last few years as a very busy startup founder, co-founder and entrepreneur, a lot of it has just been like, you know, had to be pushed aside a little bit. But part of my response to the crisis for the last month or so is this very strong impulse for the verbal for the verbal expression and I've been writing these spontaneous poems you know I'll be on runs or walks and they just have to come out it's just my it's my meaning making tool right now at the subconscious level so I think I think it's a natural impulse that we have to create space for whether we're professionals like you or or kindergartners right and yes because art is the beacon of hope in this era, in this period it is the only hope because for us to make sense of this and for us to continue our lives yeah is the only, that's the therapy that is you know most, the, the reason why sometimes i mean if you think about mental therapy and mental illness have connecting with art connecting with the self is one of the ways we can we can uh, find ex express ourselves and find meaning mm -hmm. and allowing super super important yeah yeah i love that so this is wow this has been a super rich conversation i'm, I'm excited i'm very excited about it and i think uh, anyone listening whether they're parents or teachers or not or just you know humans who are curious about creative creativity i think there are, are a lot of insights here about the power of creativity and in this particular moment just making the space for that expression if i had to pull like one major point from this conversation, I think that would be it. Like, give yourself and or your child that space for this expressive energy to come through, whatever the medium. Yeah. Not, not obsessed with the product or the skills. It's just about the process. Yes, I agree. And and super important. Like, let's not ask. You know, when a child is sharing why they did that, to me, it's such an honorable place for a parent to be because the child let into a very sacred place yeah. right yeah if we, if we can see it from that perspective that oh i was invited to that space then you to go in you don't come in and say why did you do it that way mm -hmm. right yeah oh, shit. you come in tiptoeing and like oh, but you, you cradle it right you, you hold you hold it so dear because you let you in into their soul and that's how you come in. Yeah. Into, yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's super, and, and this way the child is always expressing. Yeah, absolutely. And just to bring it back full, full circle, I mean, that's exactly one, one of the major purposes of the cardboard challenge that we're doing right now is to help parents create that safe space. And so, I mean, I'm super pumped about the the role and the products and the activities and the projects that we're seeing from kids all around the world for the cardboard challenge it's kind of like mission accomplished like we've we've helped yeah. facilitate that expression and you know to, in this brand new era of digital virtual seeing if it could be done and this was the test and yes it can absolutely be done we can connect and we have to see this as an opportunity to remove those geographical boundaries that were there before and you know, it's so, it's so wonderful what you're doing. Yeah. It's so, wow. Thank you for the nice conversation. We'll, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. We want parents and kids to get the chance to go see the final hour or so of the cardboard challenge and get their project submitted. But wow. So I know, you know, we're close friends and business partners and all everything else. So I know, I know you'll be back on the show. But this was just a yeah. super poignant moment to talk about this particular theme of creativity. So thank you, Vida. If people can find ex visuals of your art and your information at widahamdan.com, that's what I put on screen for people to see. Um, is that the best place to go if they want to contact you as well? Sure. And there's the uh, my Facebook uh, art studio. So widahamdan.com. It's in Facebook. I mean. It's um, a Facebook. Would you be able to pull that up and put it in the link? Yeah, we could put uh, it we, in the comment link. Yeah. Absolutely. It's Facebook.com slash Wida Hamdan. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank All you right. 
Absolutely. We'll do that. It's an honor to be here, and I love everything that Ten New Minds does. Well, thank you. We we love every ounce of support that we get from you. Okay, thank you. Have a great one. Take care. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.